The steroid issue. <laughs> I want I want to cover this. As you guys may or may not know, the other week I put out a video about Ricky Garrard getting disqualified from the CrossFit Games for SARMs for testing positive on a drugs test. And to be honest, like the, there was so much controversy in the comments, I was like, okay, I need to cover this just a little bit more. Not necessarily Ricky Garrard, but just the general drugs in CrossFit and in sport kind of thing. There was a lot of comments saying that I was naive about drugs. Team, I honestly know that, that there are a vast amount of drugs within all areas of sport. I have watched Icarus on Netflix and I understand kind of that depth of which elite level athletes will go to dig in and to kind of beat the system. Point two for everybody that in the comments said, everybody at the elite level in the CrossFit Games is on steroids. My, my question to you guys is one, how do you know? And two, what level does that steroid usage stop? or dwindle out. So you're, are, are you saying that everyone at the CrossFit Games is on steroids? Are you saying those top 10% are on steroids? Because I personally know a lot of people that have gone to the regionals and they're not on steroids. And I personally know them to the point where I can go up to them and ask them and say, are you on steroids? And they will answer to me wholeheartedly and correctly. So kind of the top one or two percent of people, not everybody's on steroids. This is more of a discussion part of the vlog. I just wanted to kind of talk around the issue of steroids and especially in CrossFit. Basically my point there is like, what level do you think you can get at naturally without taking anything because we have people that have got to the, at least the regionals level that I know that aren't on stuff. So that whole point of everyone that's gone to the regionals and games is on stuff, it's kind of invalid. Don't get me wrong, I understand the amount of time and effort and how much your body breaks down and how much you throw at it every single day. It may need that little extra something to recover and to get to that optimal level, but does that mean that everybody needs that to get to that level? That makes sense. There's some genetic freaks out there that, that get there naturally because their body can do that. Discuss all this down in the comments below. And then the third kind of highlighted comment that I saw was this is all a kind of conspiracy theory, right? This, this is what I read. CrossFit, to kind of prove a point, they let Garad get away with it at the regionals, but they caught him at the games to make an example of him. I don't think that's true. And then everybody's saying that Matt Fraser's on stuff, that Rich Froning's on stuff. They, they may be. And then CrossFit's covering it up. I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I guess at the end of the day, you never truly know. Only the person that's doing it knows, and us mere mortals that watch the actual games, we can always say, yeah, they're, they're on stuff, but we actually never have 100% proof. And it's just kind of annoying because if there was an amazing way to test all athletes, I think it's just quite a cool discussion. My honest, like, personal opinion is, yeah, I think a good percentage of people are taking stuff at the CrossFit Games and not getting caught, just like in every other sport around the world. I just hope that the, I hope that the testing one day surpasses the ability to pass these tests. But that's just me being naive again. <laughs> you can never take away the amount of effort that goes into being these elite level athletes, even if they are supplementing something to get there not the most ethical way to get there and you're kind of deceiving a lot of the public which is not cool and especially the kids that aspire to be like those but not everyone's on it I feel like we should have coffee time I feel like I should have a coffee here team we're having coffee time you know it's serious when I bring up the blocks and I put you in the garage with nothing on in the background back on with the usual vlog what's up Jazz? hi I'm so hungry. <sighs> when you're training and all you can think about is snacks. 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 What arrived today? Not snacks. I work. The hustle t-shirts. Some of the hustle stuff is back. So that means we've got a lot of orders to send out this weekend. And then everything that isn't back yet, we will be sending out next weekend. Boom. What are we going to do now, Jess? We're going to train. The buy into the gym? Got to make it on the roller. No. See you later. Alligator. See you in the gym. I'm out of here. When I commit to something, Jazz, I commit. Oh, no, this is good for relieving tension on the feet. I feel like it's really working my feet and my balance. Did the cardio earlier. 
tonight, bodybuilding, strength, building that muscle, working on good movement patterns. <laughs> Team, honestly, every time I open up this door, it's like a TARDIS. It doesn't look or feel real. Ready? House. Narnia. House. Narnia. House. With jazz in it. Narnia. Do you get that feeling, Jazz? Hold on. To talk to me, you have to roll here. No. Yep. No, keep going. No. No, you have to make it here. You have to. Everybody's probably thinking, what an idiot. She just does everything he says. No, nope. red bump. I was saying that this actually looks like a tar- It's true, isn't it? Yeah. I love having the gym here. Another big Team Richie update. We ordered the ski erg. Mm. Thinking we're gonna put it here. Life is good. Warm up, five minutes row, five minutes bike. This could be the closing scene. Oh no, me in a jam with my ball. It's exactly what I look like on a jam art man. What are you doing? I don't know, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I just jam with my bass, man. When I jam with my bass. <laughs> Jumping with my ball. This is what I have to put up with, people. <laughs> you gotta enjoy your training. Strict shoulder press, that's what we're starting off with today. Barbell, strict shoulder press, elbows stay tucked in, you drive up and through. None of this. It's not a functional movement pattern coming out the top of a thruster, out the top of a jerk, anything. Elbows stays tucked in, build the power in that range. And we're supersetting that with strict pull ups. Getting that vertical pull in motion strength. Listen to the Rocky Balboa album. You know what? Let's get pumped. Get pumped. Jama, bless me. Is it Rocky or is it Jazz? Look at that back. Oh yeah. You know, in that shot, they couldn't actually see your feet, so you could have just been pushing off the floor the whole time. <laughs> I'm training tonight in socks. That's how, when you have your, when you have a home gym, training whatever you want. Look at that back. What? You see in this team? Where did that come from? Superset one done. Superset two tonight is three lots of 15 to 20 ring dips, and then the superset is inverted ring rows. Kind of like that. Just not like that. This is just resting. I feel like a sloth on a tree. First two good functional compound moves. The second part more geared towards getting your first ring muscle up or improving your strength and endurance with the ring muscle up. Inverted ring rows, keep the hips high. Pull into the bottom of the chest. Ring dips, nice hollow body position. Drive in, locking out. Not like that. If you struggle with this move a little bit and can't keep the hips high because you are basically controlling your whole body weight, add a band. Hold onto the band with one hand, let it go under the lower part of the back. So it keeps the hips up. All the way in, nice powerful. Time for some core. Single arm press up position with the rings, 30 seconds each arm. Till you try this, you do not know how hard this is. Great for trunk stability and you have to obviously limit your rotation. Push away from the floor, yeah. I don't understand. Good for scapular humeral rhythm as well. It's good for your subscap and serratus anterior, keeping that shoulder pushed out, hip square. Ten more. You always do this. You always come over with the camera at the end of my set and you're like, five more, ten more. I okay. just finished. Okay. Five more. <laughs> oh, my quads. God damn it. Does anybody else's quads cramp when they do this stuff? Seated. Seated, hands forward, L sit. L sit crunches. Oh, that's so bad. I look like one of those divers. 
You know, like you know, like those diving faces. Why do you? Look? And they're like doing the tuck. You can just quad dominant. Four sets of ten. If I bend my knees, it doesn't hurt my quads as much. And just like that, session number two of the day done. These are all postal bags for us all. Dad, Dad, this is the second day in a row. You've got your t-shirt on the wrong way around. I haven't got it on the wrong way around, have I? Yes. Is it? Yes. Do you know, I thought it was a bit tight on the front. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought the chest is Honestly, growing. Jazz, this is the second day in a row. You caught me eating again. Dad, I don't know how to tell you this. What's that? Your t-shirt's on back to front. You sure? Yes. One hundred percent. I think you're right. <laughs> There's a label. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it. You see, because uh, it's dark upstairs. And it says, "So yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought that my chest was getting bigger. Label. Mid warm up. Have to put up with this. <laughs> oh, my legs. I'm a bit tall there, so, you know, just, who needs a rower? What you got there, Mike? You look so small. Bigger for you, just I'm, I'm a small person on a bike. Can't work. <laughs>